Um, the third approach that I mentioned for explaining the origin, well, explaining anything according to Jacques Minot, is a, a, an approach that relies on pure necessity or natural law or what in origin of life studies became known as self-organization. And there have been a number of these theories, but perhaps the first and most prominent theory was attempting to explain precisely the sequence specificity of proteins and other critical molecules in the cell. And the idea behind it was that just as in a crystal of salt there is a force of attraction, a chemical force that is responsible for the beautiful ordering of, a, of, of, a, of the crystalline structure that you often find with salt. Na has a plus charge, Cl a minus charge, plus and minus attract. You get a, you get a, a beautiful uh, matrix that develops. Uh, that's a self-organizing process produced by chemical attraction. And the idea that was fir first put forward, the first self-organizational theory, was put forward by a man named Dean Kenyon and his co-author Gary Steinman in a book called Biochemical Predestination. Um, we have a professor here tonight from Calvin College, so I probably need to clarify this is biochemical predestination, not the Calvinistic kind, okay? <laughs> the idea here is that you've got forces of chemical attraction that are responsible for the sequential arrangement of the amino acids that allows the protein to fold into its right structure and, 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 and perform a function in the cell. There was also the hope that perhaps this idea could be applied to explain not only the sequence specificity in proteins, but also in DNA and RNA as well. Well, it turned out that this model unraveled, and the chief architect of the model himself ended up repudiating his own theory. And there's a, a, a kind of uh, uh, many-step uh, story associated with, with this, which I tell in the book. But I want to zero in on the problem of trying to explain the origin of information in DNA by reference to any kind of self-organizational forces of attraction. Uh, Dean Kenyon realized quickly there were some empirical results that showed that his idea wasn't going to work for proteins. There were some slight differences of affinity between some amino acids and others, but they didn't correlate to uh, any of the known sequencing in actual proteins. But at a more fundamental level, he realized that the, the, got to, if if self-organization is going to work, it's got to explain the origin in DNA and R, or RNA because those molecules provide the information for building proteins. That's the more fundamental, the more, more fundamental um, uh, need in, in explanation. So I have behind me a diagram, and I wish I had a, a point. Actually, it's not there. What I have behind me is me. That's dis disconcerting. Okay, this is the, the structural formula for... The, the DNA molecule. And I want you to notice a few things. What I, for for non-chemists here, it's going to sound like Chinese at first, but stay with, hang, hang, hang with me here. Uh, along this, uh, the, 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 the two sides of the DNA molecule are made of something called the sugar phosphate backbone. The pentagons are the sugars, the circles are the phosphates, and the backbone of the molecule is not the informational part of it. It's the medium upon which the information is inscribed, if you will. Along the interior of the molecule are two copies running in opposite directions of the informational instructions. They're encoded using those bases that I discussed at the beginning of the evening, the A's, C's, G's, and T's, also known as nucleotide bases. Now, it's the specific arrangement of those nucleotide bases that constitutes the, the information in the DNA molecule, okay? Now, the, the, the question is, could you explain the specific arrangement of the bases by reference to self-organizational forces of attraction? Could chemistry explain that information? Now, there are little sticks that you can see on my figure, and the sticks represent chemical bonds, connection points, where there is a force of attraction holding something together. Notice that there are sticks between each of the sugars and phosphates. Notice that there is a bond as well between each of the bases and the pentagons in the sugar phosphate backbone. But notice that there are no bonds between the bases in the information bearing axis, the vertical axis of the molecule on the screen there. There are no forces of attraction whatsoever. It's not a matter of 
are there forces that are differential in strength or otherwise? It's just that there are no bonds between those, th those bases. No bonds that could explain their specific arrangement. Notice also that it's, you have a bond between the base and the, sh and, the, and the pentagons, but here's another little factoid that you need to know. It's the same kind of chemical bond in each case. It's ca called an N-glycosidic bond for chemists who are keeping score back home. And it, that bond allows any one of the four bases to attach to the backbone with equal facility. It doesn't discriminate. Now, that was all probably difficult, but I'm now going to make it simple. I've got a little visual aid here with a message pandering to the local audience, okay? <laughs> La Mirada rocks, okay? Sometimes I put a Z in there because my students told me that made it even more cool, okay? Um, <laughs> Now, <clears throat> this is, you might recognize, a magnetic chalkboard. This is a little metallic chalkboard, and there are magnets in the back of these letters. So there are forces of attraction, forces of necessity, if you will, that explain why the message sticks to the medium. Now, that's exactly the same, that, that's exactly what's going on in DNA. There are forces of attraction that explain why the message sticks to the medium, but those forces of attraction don't discriminate. I can put the L here, here, or here, anywhere I like, okay? And notice that those forces of attraction do not determine the arrangement. I can destroy this arrangement and make another one very easily, okay? So, um, and so let me put it to you now, maybe, as a rhetorical question. Oops, but I destroyed the message. Let's go back to the message, rocks. Oh, I dropped it. Let's talk about the message I had at the beginning. Was that the result? Sometimes these visual aids are more trouble than they're worth. <laughs> what have I got now? Lada Riminara. No, that's not good. It's sick. That doesn't good. Um, was the message I had at the beginning the result of the magnetism? Okay, that's the key point. Back to the DNA, the DNA thing. I mean, I, I'll get myself out of trouble. Okay, if, go, let's go back to that DNA picture. Yeah, thanks. If you look at the DNA molecule, I've never, I've never gotten applause for messing up a visual aid before, but uh, <laughs> if you go back to the, the, the point I'm making about the DNA is that the, the arrangement of the bases, which constitutes the informational endowment of the DNA molecule, is not the result of the chemistry attraction that holds the, the, the chemistry of attraction that holds the molecule together.